Hi, it's Kate, and this is the first video for week 11 of Math 23B. Before we get into using the exterior derivative on various forms that have physical significance, we just want to take a moment and talk a little bit about what happens when we're calculating with the exterior derivative. So first off, right off the bat, when you're computing the exterior derivative, applying it to a zero form field, that's a function. So you're computing the exterior derivative of a function, and we're liberated from the limit definition of the exterior derivative, and we're using the shortcut version. Thank goodness. What we really have here are a bunch of terms that all look the same, that can be expressed in sigma notation. And that's going to be the partial derivatives of this function times their respective one form. So if you're looking at, say, f was a three variable function, maybe x1, x2, x3 are the variables that appear in it. So when you apply the exterior derivative to it, what you'll end up with is the derivative with respect to the first variable times dx1, the derivative with the, plus the derivative with respect to the second variable times dx2, plus the derivative with respect to the third variable times dx3. Now let's take a look when d is applied to a one-form field. So maybe something that looks like this, a function g times a basis one-form. Well, the coefficients are going to be the partial derivatives of g and multiplied by basis two forms. So note that this derivative, the variable that it's being taken with respect to, matches this one form right here that's being wedged with this one to create this basis two form. So you'll immediately see, or maybe you haven't, but you'll see as we get started in lecture on Tuesday, that the equality of mixed partials here, the fact that if you take the derivative of a function with respect to one variable and then with respect to the other, and then start over and reverse that order, you're going to get the same thing when you are dealing with nice continuous functions. And combine that with the fact that dxi wedge dxj equals, and this should say negative 1 times dxj wedge dxi, what ends up happening is that if you take the exterior derivative twice, you will get 0, because all these common terms are additive inverses of each other, right? You'll have a times a basis 1 form minus a times that same basis 1 form because you've swapped this direction here. And I'll go back in and fix that typo, but that should have a negative sign on it on the other side, on the right-hand side, or the left-hand side, whichever you prefer. And in fact, more generally, it follows that if you're taking the exterior derivative twice of any function right here, and it's a k form here, up here we just had a one form, but here we have a k form. If you're taking the exterior derivative twice, you're going to end up with it evaluating to zero. And in fact, by linearity, it's just going to be the most succinct way of putting this is that the exterior derivative of the exterior derivative of phi, and phi being any form field, not just a one form, not just like a k form, any form field, it's going to give you zero. And this is a consequence of the fact that for any k parallelogram, the boundary of the boundary is zero. What does that really mean? Well, if we're looking at a parallelogram over here, and this is a two parallelogram, we know the boundary of this is traversed in a counterclockwise manner, just sort of standard orientation here. But then if we were looking at the boundary of the boundary, those would be the various endpoints that each of these sides sort of start and end at. So that would be here, and here, and here, and here. And of course, if we're just looking at the bottom part of this, if we're looking at the boundary of the boundary, we know that this has a positive sign, this has a negative sign. But then if we're looking at the right-hand side along here, the endpoint at the top has a positive sign, and then the endpoint at the bottom has a negative sign. And then if we're looking at the top, we know that the right-hand point has a positive sign, and the left-hand point has a negative sign. And if we're looking at the left-hand side, we know that the boundary of the boundary, where we end right, has a positive sign, and then the where we started had a negative sign. And we can see that because each of these points are shared by two pieces of the boundary, one will be a positive orientation, one will be a negative orientation. We end up summing that around. We end up adding and subtracting the same things over and over again, and so our boundary ends up being zero. And this happens even if you're doing it in the three-dimensional case, right? If you have a three parallelogram, your boundary is a bunch of two parallelograms whose boundary is a bunch of one parallelograms, but each one parallelogram is being traversed in one direction, 
as it's the boundary for one of the two parallelograms, and then traverse in the opposite direction as it's the shared boundary of another uh, two parallelogram. And the same thing will happen. Some things to remember is that the exterior derivative, like the ordinary univariate calculus version of the derivative, is a linear operator. So if you're taking the exterior derivative of a linear combination of two forms, then it's going to be a linear combination. Your actual answer is going to be a linear combination of the exterior derivatives of those forms. The product rule for the exterior derivative has a tricky minus sign because what ends up happening is that in order for you to take the product here, note that if you're taking the exterior derivative of a wedge product of two forms, you'll want to do uh, the exterior derivative first acting on phi and then wedge it with psi and then leave phi alone and take the exterior derivative of psi, but you'll want to sort of account for the swaps, right? Just that you need to do in order to get all of these variables in order again in the wedge product. And so this is being raised to the kth power because phi is a k form. And in R3, there is a close connection between the exterior derivative and the gradient operator. If you begin with an, a function and you apply the exterior derivative to get the one form that's going to give you the partial respect to x, dx, plus the partial respect to y, dy, plus the partial respect to z, dz, this is the work form of the vector field where each component is a partial derivative of f. And this vector field is the gradient vector field of the function f. Let's take a look more closely at applying exterior derivatives and seeing exactly what kinds of vector fields and flux forms and work forms we're getting.